Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mean here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about attack bonus and base attack bonus. Now, we are deviating from our regularly scheduled program from doing Man God Saga because I've owed you this video for a while and I feel like we should cover this. Uh, you'll see that I have leveled up uh, arbitrarily in this particular uh, campaign. Uh, Tox the Crystal and you get 3000 XP and 3000 gold did a bunch of times, enough to get what I want expressed here. Um, we have a monster spawner, so we can actually tag monsters and show you the changes to our attack bonus. But by and large, we're going to talk first about your base attack bonus. Now, what this is, is a metric based on the type of character classes you've picked. Especially if you have multi-class, this is going to be highly important. Uh, if you are any of the fighter types, and we'll get into some of those here once we level up, so I can demonstrate to you where you can find the type of base attack bonus you get per class. But basically, if you think of it as a fighter type, paladin, ranger, fighter, obviously, barbarian, even I think swashbuckler gets in there, uh, those are high babs. What that means is for whatever level you pick on it, so let's say I'm a level 10 fighter and level 20 barbarian, for each level you get a base attack bonus point. So I'm a level 1 fighter, I get 1 point. If I was a level 10 fighter, it'd be 10 for my base attack. If I'm 10 fighter, 20 barbarian, it'd be 10 plus 20, so I'd be a 30, which is the highest you can be for a base attack bonus for a level 30 character. Okay, Relatively straightforward. For every level you dip into one of those fighter types, you get another attack a base attack bonus. Excuse me, say it the right way. There are two other types, though. There's a medium base attack bonus types, and there's a few that are low base attack bonus types. Think of your wizards and your sorcerers. The medium ones are like your fighters, uh, classes that are kind of like spells, but not spells. So think your clerics, your druids, uh, bards are in there, I think rogues fall in that category, even warlocks dip into the medium base attack bonus. Uh, and what they do is their progression is uh, on a scale of four. They m first level they get nothing, the next three levels they get a point each level. And then the next level after that, so level five, if you will, they get nothing again, so it starts all over. And then six, seven, eight, they'll get a point for each of those levels. So for example, a level four cleric will have a bab of three. Nothing at first level, a point for each level after that. A level five cleric still has a base attack bonus of three because at level five it starts the clock over back at the plus zero. Now, that's confusing, I'll grant you. It gets even worse when you start to multi-class, which is why we're going to multi-class this character to give you a feel for what I'm talking about. So I'm a level 1 fighter. If I were to level up and go to level 1 cleric, I would get no base attack bonus increase because it is a medium base attack bonus, which you can see here. Barbarians, on the other hand, have a high. Bards have a medium. Clerics and druids both have medium. Favorite soul, medium, monk, medium, paladins have a high, rangers have a high, base attack bonus, rogues are medium, uh, sorcerers and wizards are the low ones in the totem pole. They is even worse than we expect. Spirit shaman should be medium, uh, same with warlock, medium, which is kind of misleading. A lot of people would just assume, oh, he's a caster type. He's not really. He's kind of in the middle again, and therefore kind of falls in there with the uh, Bard, as far as I'm concerned. Swashbuckler is high, uh, and again, Wizard and Sorcerer are both low. Let's do Cleric, though. With them doing a Cleric, a Druid, a Wizard for our split, for a reason. A, because it allows me to unlock all my spells that I want to show you that I bought with scrolls. B, I can unlock the feats that I want to show you here, too. So, nothing important really here. Uh, well, I have to get my lower up. And the reason for that is I have a couple magic weapons. Don't particularly care about the domains right now. It will be important later, but not that anything I can't explain to you. Notice how you see some of these spells are now unlocked. These are scrolls now that I have access to because I'm a cleric. Okay. Uh, notice how I'm a level 2 character, a level 1 fighter, level 1 cleric split. But my bab is still only a 1. It's because the level 1 cleric I get nothing because it's a medium. If it was a low, it'd be the same deal. Like if I went wizard, I would still get nothing, which I'm about to show you here in a moment. Same with druid, level one, nothing. Only the ones that have a high bab always receive a base attack bonus at each level. 
So if I was at another level of fighter, doesn't matter if it's level two, level three, and level seven, I would always get another plus one added to my bab. Okay, that's extremely helpful. So let's level up and grab the druid. And we'll grab the wizard after that. Doesn't matter for this part. I recommend it's fine. Uh, for feats though, I want to show you a specific one. Give that a couple. Weapon focus is going to be extremely useful. As you know, to give you a plus one uh, to your attack bonus, not your bab, your attack bonus with a specific weapon. Well, I have four different, five different weapons, matter of fact, that I have gifted myself. A plus one dagger, a plus one short sword, a plus one sling, a uh, uh, plus one short bow, and plus, or actually a non-magical darts, and that's going to be important here in a minute. Uh, but let's actually go with the dagger for our weapon focus. Uh, it'll be easier to explain how that's increasing my ability to do stuff. And I'm going to grab a wolf, what the hell. I don't particularly care if you want it. Notice again, my bab did not go up. Because again, level 1 druid, I get nothing for a bonus. If I went level 2 for any of these three, it would go up. Hell, for level 2, level 3, or level 4, it would go up. Once I get to a level 5 cleric, again, it would not move. Or a level 5 druid, it would not move. And again, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Let's grab that wizard now. And we're doing that because I want to have access to all my spells. Just put it in something useless like charisma. Recommend. Generalist. I uh, want a couple specific spells. Here's True Strike. Mage Armor is always helpful. And I'm going to take a Shocking Grasp. Ooh, reduced person. Uh, shocking Grasp. Sure. Okay. Now, I'm a level 4 character with a bab of 1, which is Lame Sauce. Even if I was a level 4 wizard, straight up wizard, this would be a bab of 2. Wizards are the low bab. Same with uh, sorcerers. As a result of being the low bab category, they only get it every other level. Odd levels, I get nothing. So level one, I got nothing. Level two, I'll get another plus one to my bab. Level three, wizard, I'll get nothing. Level four, I'd get another plus one. So again, if I was a level four wizard right now, straight wizard, I'd have a bab of two. So already I've gimped this character beyond what it should be. Because wizards and sorcerers are the lowest bab you should probably ever see. And I'm already below them right now. It's because no one would ever actually pick a class like this. This would be stupid as all hell. I mean, this is more to demonstrate than anything. And yes, there are people that will min-max and do all kinds of great stuff. By and large, I'm just trying to show you how your bat is calculated, how it affects your attack bonus, and how you can increase any of these things. Okay. So now, our base attack bonus again is keying off of our classes. There's only one other real good way that I know of to increase your base attack bonus even if it's temporary, this spell here called Divine Power. This one turns whatever level you are, not level of caster level, whatever level you are, it basically calculates you like you're a fighter of that same level. So I'm a level four character. If I were to cast a spell on me, my bab would be like a level four fighter, which would be a bab of four. Which doesn't sound great, but compared to a one, that's definitely in the right direction. Where this really shines is when you become a level 30 cleric, let's say cast this spell, a level 30 cleric would only have a bab normally of 22. That's the highest they can get as a straight 30 cleric um, with their medium attack, a base attack bonus. It gets rounded down, so it would be 22 in a fraction. You basically take 30, divide by 4, times by 3, and you get 22 point something, you know, always round down. So 22 would be the highest bab that a normal cleric could get at level 30. Casting this spell, he's treated like a level 30 uh, fighter. And therefore, a 22 bab suddenly jumps to 30. That's a big jump. And then you throw in the fact that they have more strength, and that's going to affect their attack bonus for melee attacks, and it just gets better from there. So again, one of the only real good ways to affect your bab that I know of, okay, besides picking your classes in the proper way. Uh, wizards, if they had access to a spell like this, but if, let's say, you're a level 20 wizard or level 10 cleric, and I have this spell here, my bab, let's calculate it. A 20 wizard would be half, because they're low. So every other one to get it. So you take 20 divided by 2, that's how much their bab would be. Uh, so I'd have a bab of 10 for being a level 20 wizard. Level 10 cleric is additive. You take 10 times it by 3, 30, divided by 4. What is that, 20? 
8 would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 and change, round down, so 7 from the cleric levels, 10 from the wizard levels, so that'd be a bab of 17 for that type of character. And again, if I cast this spell from a scroll, let's say, or hell, if my cleric has the ability to cast it, doesn't matter. As long as I cast the spell, I'm a level 30 character as far as the game is concerned. Suddenly my 17 bad, which is lame sauce, jumps to a 30 for short periods of time. That's a big, big increase, right? Again, this is what we're talking about. Now there's other ways to affect your attack bonus. So your attack bonus is calculated off of your bab, obviously. Uh, also your attribute bonuses. So if it's melee, it's usually, but not always, calculated by strength. If you're ranged, it's usually, but not always, calculated by your dexterity bonus. Uh, ways around this are if you have a higher dexterity, like you see here, then you have strength. If I took weapon finesse and was using something like a weapon finesse ability, or weapon, like a dagger, perhaps, or a short sword even falls within that category, it would key it off of my dexterity because it's a higher attribute bonus. Again, if it's higher, that's important. The reason you do that, again, if you're a more agile type character and would have a lame strength bonus, but you know you're going to get in the melee, yeah, you're not going to be doing epic damage because you don't have a strength bonus going into it. I only have a plus one right now. Uh, as you can see here, I have an attack bonus with my dagger. That's a plus... Oh, actually, I don't count this. Always refresh your screens, guys. Always refresh your screens. Don't just trust it for faith. It's a plus five now. Where's that coming from? Well, the dagger's plus one. It's magic. I have a plus one from strength, so now that's plus two. I have a bab of one, so that's now three. Well, where's the other two points coming from? Well, I have a couple wonderful things going for me here. One, I am a small stature, right here. So because I'm a small stature, I get an attack roll bump because it's assuming that everything I'm attacking is bigger than me. Now, why the heck Am I getting another plus one? Well, I got my weapon focus for my dagger, remember? So that's another one, so that puts me at the plus five. How do I know that that's plus five? That's why? Because I don't have weapon focus for short sword. It's still a plus one weapon, and I do not have weapon finesse. So if I equip this and it goes to a plus four, you'll see why. Yep, weapon focus, okay? So with weapon focus, without. Otherwise, it should be the exact same number. So I'm getting a bonus from being uh, weapon focus for dagger when I have it equipped. Notice I have ranged weapons and these are keying off my dexterity so it should be even higher than you think but watch this. This one's a magic weapon this one's a magic weapon, both plus one this one is non-magic it's a regular darts but there's a trick here. This gives me a plus six I do not have weapon focus I'll get to that in a second. Plus one is coming from my base attack bonus plus two from dexterity so that's three Where's the other three points coming from? One's coming from it being a sling. And then the other two are coming from feats for me being a halfling. Good aim. Slings, just like darts, are considered thrown weapons. Even though it's not thrown, it's chucked from the sling, so it's shot as far as I'm concerned, but the game considers it thrown. So I get a plus one attack bonus from that. And I get another plus one attack bonus from being small, remember? because we're assuming we're attacking large things and therefore I have an attack bonus because of that. So that's two from that, uh, one from being small, one from being good aim, one from being a magic weapon, so that's three, another one here, that's four, two more from here, from dexterity, makes it six, so plus six. Now if I switch to short bow, it's plus five. Why? Because I don't get this feat, good aim. It's not a thrown weapon, it's a shot weapon and therefore I lose that plus one. So it's the normal number. It's not that I lost it, it's just the number that it should be. Darts should also be low, you would think, but notice because it's not magic, I still have a plus five. Why? Well, because instead of it being a plus one weapon, because it's not, I am now getting the good aim back because it's a thrown weapon. So my darts, my ability to hit you with darts is just as good as my ability to hit you with a short bow plus one. That's the take home message here. Now, of course, I could pump that through all kinds of ways. Increase my dexterity. Would make that go up because my dexterity is higher. The attribute bump would go higher. And therefore, my attack bonus would go higher for any of those three weapons. 
if I wanted to make sure I could hit you even better with my melee weapons, I could do a couple of things. Either A, I could do increase my strength, because it's keying off of my strength. I could get the feet weapon finesse, because these weapons would actually fall in that category, and it would then key off my dexterity. Uh, I could uh, get a more magic weapon, so spells like greater magic weapon, which could increase it to above the plus one that it is right now, to say plus two, plus three, plus five even. This one, because it's cast from a scroll, would be limited to plus three. But that would be a plus three dagger now, instead of a plus one dagger for short periods of time, hours long, 15 hours to be precise, still pretty damn good. And again, so you can see why some spells are going to really increase your attack bonus. In, uh, higher magic weapons, a dagger plus two is obviously better than a dagger plus one, you get the idea. So those will go a long way to make sure you hit your target. What else could you do? Well, let's see. If I were to level up, and let's grab a, another level of wizard, just because... Uh, I want to get a range spell. Something that a uh, range touch attack would be important. Oh, let's grab some Raven Feeling too. Never heard that Raven Feeling. Okay. Now, notice how my bad has gone up. It is now two. Why? I get one from Fighter, and I'm only getting one from Wizard. Remember, two divided by two is one. You round down, so one is what I got. One and one make two. These guys are not contributing in any way, shape, or form to my bad, because they're only level 1. If I take each of these to level 2, then I'll have another 2 more bad added to it, which I'm about to do. Same with fire, but if I add any levels of fire, my bad goes up, right? So again, I'm getting better, I still suck. I'm a level 5 character and I have a bad of 2. This is lame sauce. But it's typical. Like a level 5 wizard would only have a bad of 2, or sorcerer for that matter, would only have a bad of 2. So it's not horrible, per se, but it's not good. Well, how can we change these things, Brother Newton, would be the next obvious question. Well, so, again, we have feats that we can get, weapon focus being a fine example, uh, weapon finesse if I want to focus on my dexterity, which, why wouldn't I? Uh, but I also have a high wisdom. Now watch this. There's a feat called Zen Archery that allows you to substitute your dexterity bonus with your wisdom bonus, assuming, of course, it's higher for your ranged attacks. Okay, so your sling, your bows, crossbows, your darts, your shuriken, thrown slash shot weapons are ranged. Therefore, if I know I'm gonna be a cleric, let's say, or a druid for that matter, that has a high wisdom and maybe a lame sauce dexterity, because what do I care? Get Zen Archery. Any ranged attack you have then will gain a bonus based off of that high wisdom that presumably you're gonna get, because the druid and a cleric really want a high wisdom, right? And then, of course, there are spells that can increase great spells, like Owl's Insight. If I'm a level 30 cleric, and I want to be an archer, let's say, just because, I get this spell here at a shop, and allows me to cast it. If I'm a level, oh, let's make it a druid, be just fair here, because I'm a level 30 druid, and I want to be a sling-using druid, let's just say. I'm a level 30 druid. I cast this spell, my caster level is 30, basically they cut it in half, so I get a 15 bump to my wisdom score. Let's say my wisdom is already 20, because I'm a, a badass druid and I want it to be 20. Now I have a wisdom of 35, because I cast this spell on me and it lasts for hours. Okay. Now, that 35 wisdom, instead of being 20, which would give me a plus 5 bonus, it's 35, which the bonus would be, let's see, 34, 24, 12? So a plus 5 goes to a plus 12. That's for my ranged attacks. So instead of being a plus 5 bonus to my attack, on my base attack bonus and whatever magical weapons I have for my sling, let's say, I'm increasing it another 7 points. That's a huge increase for your attack bonus. That's like saying you have now a magic sling of plus plus 1 of plus 8. For all intents and purposes for the attack roll. That's huge, right? So there are good spells out there, even better than you think. For certain things. So yeah, bull strength's useful. So's a, a gauntlets of ogre strength, or a belt of giant strength, or you know, cat's grace if you're gonna go with the dexterity route. You get the idea. Anything that affects those attributes that you're keying whatever type of attack off of, whether it's melee, melee touch attack, range, range touch attack, those are all important. Well, what else can you do? Well, we have all these wonderful spells. 
the only one that you see graded out here that's red is Warcry, and that's because it is a bard specific spell. We didn't take a level in bard, we can't, because you can only have four classes maximum. But look at all the spells that we have that we can really bump stuff with. Magic weapon, greater magic weapon, which we can actually see here, can get you into all the way up to a plus five if you happen to level it up nice. These are all from scrolls, so it's kind of limited, but still, pretty good spell. And especially in those low magic campaigns where you don't have magical items, or you have, like this, where it's a plus one, or it's a, a masterwork weapon where it's only an attack bonus of plus one and not an attack bonus of plus three, four, or five, these spells can actually get you there. There's ones like True Strike, which is like the granddaddy pimp of them all, a plus 20 bonus to your attack roll. And this is important for a couple of reasons. A, wizards and sorcerers get it at an early, early level. Some items, weapons, rings will have you can cast it one time a day it's awesome these are the spells that you would use for when you need to hit your target right because a plus 20 bump for only nine seconds doesn't last very long but it's a really nice bump and it's the maximum bump and what i mean by this is this game actually has a cap on your attack bonus increases 20 is the maximum so this puts you at max a lot of these spells will put you closer to that plus 20 there are some things that don't even fall within the cap that can still uh, increase your attack bonus. Let me list them for you just so you have them. Things like weapon focus, whether it's epic weapon focus, the regular weapon focus, there's greater weapon focus, superior weapon focus, all those, if you're using the right weapon, can get you over the plus 20 cap. Epic prowess, bane of enemies for those of you that like rangers. Uh, small stature, which I am because, again, I'm a halfling, right? So I have this one right here. That falls outside of the plus 20 cap, so I can actually get to plus 21 because I'm small. Uh, thing like size, so small stature is built into the fact that I'm a halfling. But if I had, say, a reduced person spell on my character, I could shrink, you know, a human size down to halfling size, and I get that plus one attack bonus because I'm hitting larger targets, right? Uh, what else? A uh, good aim, which we already saw for the halfling. Uh, Eldritch Master is another one. Charisma bonus for those of you that are uh, rocking the smite attack, you know, like uh, paladins that the smite evils or smite infidel or smite good. Get a charisma bonus to their attack roll. So, again, spells that would increase your charisma or gear that would increase your charisma bonus are applicable here and that fall outside of the range of the plus 20 bonus cap. Uh, things like the Stormlord and the uh, Arcane Archer get uh, attack bonuses based on the weapon they're using, or their arrows if they're an Arcane Archer. Those fall outside of the uh, plus 20 cap bonus. So again, they can pump it higher than this, which is really nice because they should be able to hit their mark. I mean, they're, they're epic level classes for a reason. But again, those fall outside of this. These ones all fall within this category with the exception of Divine Power, which is a little freak of the group, which I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, the true strike's great, short term. Haste and spells just like haste, like uh, snake swiftness, or mass snake swiftness, which is basically haste but only for one round. It's kind of lame sauce, but it's still a plus one attack roll bump for you or for you and your friends if you're using haste or mass snake swiftness. And then again, those go toward the plus 20 cap. Uh, other spells like um, heroism, plus two. Uh, greater heroism because of plus four. Uh, Warcry, I've actually opened it up in here. This is a bard version of a spell because it's a plus two. And notice it does other stuff too. Warf actually just focusing on the attack bonus, right? So again, good stuff. The reason I actually also have this in here is not just to mention that bards have this spell that no one else does, but also bards have a inspiration called Inspire Courage, I think. And it also is an attack bonus increase that falls, I believe, within this plus 20 cap. Divine Favor, very low level, cheap, cleric, paladin based spell, plus one for attack, also gives you some magical damage. If you level it up, i.e. you have a high caster level, you can get to a plus two or even a maximum of a plus three. That's a nice little bump. It lasts for a minute too, it's not great, but most fights are relatively quick, I've found. If it's lasting more than a minute, you got probably other problems and you're having a little bad. You're probably getting wailed on by that point, so you might as well have more spells on you more teammates that are better, you know, better weapons, better gear, you get the idea. Um, but Divine Favor is a nice, quick, and easy, beautiful spell. Bless, of course, a classic AoE move that helps you, your friends, your pets, 
really nice plus one to your attack rolls and other stuff too. But by and large, it's the attack rolls that you want. Aid and mass aid, great. You know, extra hit points are nice. The attack bonus is nice. Mass aid is even better. It does to everybody and get even more hit points. Uh, prayer is a great one for a couple of reasons. One, you get the attack bump, some extra damage and other stuff too. But it's a penalty for anyone that's an enemy within the range of the spell when it's cast. A nice way to make sure that they're within at you and you're beating on them. So prayer is a really good spell. There's a gap here. The reason for the gap is I'm missing a spell called Recitation. I can't get it from this guy and I'm not leveled high enough to get to Recitation. But it's another one that doesn't attack bonus bump. So another cleric type spell. Battle Tide is great. It's an AOE move, lasts for a long period of time. Uh, well not a long period of time, but it's a nice range, I should say. It stays on you, it's like an aura. So anyone in the aura that's on your side gets a bump to attack rolls, damage, other stuff. Everyone that's in your enemy gets a penalty. So they're whiffing and you're hitting more likely and doing more damage. All great stuff. Right? Uh, now we have Magic Fang and Greater Magic Fang. And those are basically the equivalent of Magic Weapon and Greater Magic Weapon, but for like pets. So we're talking uh, animal companions. I think it even works on summon critters, but I don't usually use them on them because they die so quickly that the duration is kind of wasted on them. Uh, but if you really need them to hit something, like only Magic Weapons will hit the bad guy, you can Magic Fang the bastard up and watch them go to town, nothing wrong with that. I think you can even use these on yourself as like in your druid forms, in your wild shapes, um, if you have the ability to cast, of course, when you're in that shape. You can't cast this on yourself as a human because you don't have fangs. You'd have to change and then cast it, or have someone cast it on you, I suppose that would work too. But still, basically the same general principle, uh, more attack bonus, more damage, so it's basically like turning your attacks into magical attacks. Uh, Awaken is amazing attack roll bonus, as well as a strength bonus, which will also, since they're all doing melee attacks as pets and little companions, um, they'll get an attack bonus from that too. More wisdom and constitution and blah blah blah, but basically a really nice one. Um, notice how this lasts as long as it remains at your side. So if I cast it on my animal companion, my wolf, he has that buff until he either dies or I dispel him or he gets dispelled, you know, basically the same general principle. I go from zone to zone, he should still have that buff on him. So as long as you cast it once, you don't need to have ten of them in your damn tray. Cast it once, be happy. You know, if he dies and, God forbid, you have to resummon him, you know, just relearn the spell, make sure to cast it, otherwise you'll forget, and you'll be like, oh, gee, why is he sucking? Oh, he doesn't have a waken on him. But again, a really great spell. And if that's a great spell, then this one is a monster. Nature's Avatar. Now, I wouldn't recommend it because it's a level 9 druid spell and I could think of all kinds of cooler stuff. But if I had it on a scroll, eh, I could cast it. It doesn't last very long, but you cast it on that animal ally, and look what happens. Plus 10 bonus to his attack rolls and damage, and some temporary hit points per caster level, no less. Plus he has a haste spell on him. So the animal becomes just a vicious little machine. Will it be enough to take out everything? Eh, the animal pain is usually pretty lackluster from what I found. But if you're a straight druid 30 or something like that, you could see this, you know, having some pretty good use of that pet. Especially if you take the feats that increase your animal companion to useful levels. Well, uh, I'm thinking those are there. Going ranger, for instance. But, uh, again, a druid spell only. But good stuff. Um, there are other spells, like Tensor's Transformation, which is kind of... Yeah, it's an attack bonus increase, but it's kind of not... What I mean is you're turning into a different form. So a Tensor's Transformation as a wizard or a sorcerer or even a cleric that has the fury, which why would you even pick this? But it, you know, I suppose. It does look cool, it's kind of stupid. You get stats of level 20 across the board, strength, dex, con, boom, all go 20 no matter what the hell you were before. You change, you get a sword, uh, whether you had one or not, you'd be barehanded and you cast a spell, bam, you got a big ass sword in your hand. You get 20 for your physical stats. You get uh, a bab equal to uh, half of the uh, caster level. So in this case, half of 11 would be 5.5 rounded down. So you get a plus 5 to your bab. Or, sorry, not your bab. Your attack bonus doesn't affect your bab. But a plus 5 to your attack bonus, plus the fact that your strength is 20, which means you get a plus 5 from it for melee. And you get a sword, you get some armor class increase, and you basically go to town as a fighter, as a wizard. Okay. There's better spells out there. But if you wanted to play around with it, I could see being, I'll draw their fire, run into battle as a freaking, <laughs> you know, knight, basically shining wizard armor. 
and going to town. You can't cast spells in this form. It's the downside. It's much like your polymorph self and your shape change ability. You can turn, you get different stats and different effects, but by and large you can't cast spells anymore. So, yeah, it's okay. But again, it is another one of those that will bump your attack bonus. Now, Divine Power is a freak. Again, this is the one that turns you into a fighter of whatever level you are. So it doesn't matter if I'm a level 5 cleric and a level 15 wizard and a level 10 druid, if I can cast this spell for whatever reason, like it's on a scroll, suddenly I'm a level 30 fighter as far as the game's concerned for the duration of the scroll. And that means I have a bab of 30. And a strength bump and all that implies from it for melee attacks. The reason that this is so OP is not because clerics can get it, it's because clerics at level 3 can, uh, caster level can get it if they have the strength domain. Some people have modded it out so they can get other domains that get it also at level 3. But by and large, strength can get it, and that means it can be persisted at level 9, which means for 24 hours this spell is in effect. So a cleric can basically be a fighter with a plus 6 strength, extra hit points, and a, a bab of 30 at level 30. 24 hour period by one casting of this level 9 spell. Pretty badass. And then they have access to all their other cool stuff that clerics get. So it's not like they change into a fighter like the Tensor's Transformation. They literally just stay their form and just beat ass. Really great spell, even without it being persisted. Just the normal version, or extended version for that matter, is great. Good stuff. But there's other spells. You know, the ones that buff your physical attributes or your mental if you're going for the Zen Archery route. Rage, again, is another one that buffs physical attributes, much like Barbarian's Rage would. A large person has a penalty slash a buff. More uh, melee strength uh, attack bonus because of your increased strength. You also get a penalty, though, to your attack roll because of your size. Well, they negate each other out then. Uh, the dexterity penalty screws your armor class, and that's not cool. And because of your size, it's easier to hit you. So again, your armor class is going down a lot. Really sucks. But it's still a cool looking spell, and I can see the use of it. And you can still cast spells while in this form. So hmm. there's the granddaddy version of it, the cleric's version, Righteous Might, level 5 spell. Same basic gist, more strength, more constitution, no armor class penalty because of dexterity, but there is an armor class penalty because of size, and an attack bonus penalty because of size. But if you're meleeing, you still have a plus two uh, attack bonus bonus because of your strength. So in the grand scheme of things, you're still going up in attack bonus in melee. So this is still a really good spell, I think. And again, it looks just like a large person. It just looks cooler. So by and large, a pretty badass spell. And again, attack bonus increases and decreases because of size. So, you know, large person, you know, righteous might, or reduced person would be a bonus, or being short, you know, small stature because you're a halfling. Again, all those things are playing an effect on your attack bonus up here. Um, the last thing to talk about would be like these little goobers that you have here. And these are ones that, while penalties are short, it's important to note them because A, it's ways for you to penalize the bad guy, but also B, these can be used against you to penalize you. So Bane being a fine example, it's the opposite of Bless. Bad guys love to use this on you and your party, and bam, you just got nerfed. Uh, same with Curse, which will you know mess up physical attributes, your strength, your dex, your con. Same with Poisons, which I didn't put in here because it's too many to list. Curse of Impending Blades would be one you could use on the bad guy to lower their armor class, which is like saying increasing your attack bonus. It's potato, patata, by and large, is helpful. Uh, slow is another example armor class penalty to the bad guys and uh, attack roll penalty to them too so they're whiffing and it's easier to hit them so all good stuff and this is a team friendly spell so you can cast it at your feet doesn't hurt you doesn't hurt your team hurts only the bad guys so good stuff uh, other stuff though like ray of enfeeblement lower strength moon bolt if you want to go druid route or spirit shaman also nerfs strength um, these are spells that i would use in conjunction with stuff like true strike and then Raven Feedment, both level 1 spells for a wizard slash sorcerer. And if you have a bad guy like a huge ass ogre, you're far enough away, hit True Strike, knowing that he's charging you, of course. And then within that 9 seconds, you better have fired off your Raven Feedment to nerf his strength. Because that plus 20 bonus, you're capped for that 9 seconds. And then once it wears off, you're back to being a wuss all over again. But if you hit him, ooh, baby, you could really nerf his strength. 
by a considerable amount. You know, at maximum we're talking six to eleven strength point decrease. Even for a strong, strong dude, someone like a strength of twenty to thirty, even you've really nerfed him pretty damn hefty. And that's decreasing his attack bonus and melee and the damage that he does to you when he does hit you. So yeah, good tactics. But it can also be used against you too, so keep that in mind. Before we get off here though, let's actually do some leveling up. Just because I want to show you some of these other feats. Now again, just to reiterate our numbers here, let's equip some stuff. Plus six with the dagger. Short sword plus six. No, I'm not really sure why that is. Did I? No. Hey, I refresh. Haha. <laughs> plus five. There we go. Short sword plus five. No. Uh, plus seven with the sling. Plus six with the bow. Should be plus six then also when I'm with the dart. Alright, well, let's do a little level, shall we? Oh, uh, so we just did wizard, let's do cleric. And now let's grab some of that uh, Zen archery, shall we? Boom, now again. Changes your wisdom bonus is used if it's higher than the dexterity. That's going to be important. Now let's look at this again, okay? So here's our dagger. Nothing different, still plus seven. Well, actually, it's higher because we got a bab now, three, excuse me. Was well, plus six, now it's plus seven. That's because we went up a level in cleric. Remember, the second level counts, first level didn't. Uh, this should be six. Yep. This one's now nine. And again, notice it's nine, not just eight. It's nine because the wisdom is being counted, not the dexterity, because we have Zen archery. This is eight now instead of seven. This should be good now, instead of 7. So again, Wisdom is keying in. How do I know this? Because I have spells. Now watch what happens when I use something like Owl's Wisdom on my ass. It's a plus 4 to Wisdom, and so the 16 should go to 20, which would be a plus 5 increase. So this should go up another 2 points for any of those ranged abilities. There you go. So let's start again with here. Plus 11. Plus 10, plus 10, instead of 8, 8, and 9, and it's going up because it's keyed off of Wisdom. If I keyed up something like Cat's Grace and bumped it to 19, it would still be keying off of Wisdom, because the Wisdom is higher or equal to, right? The reason I point that out is, now watch this, I'm taking a knee to wipe all the spells off me, okay? Wisdom 16, Dexterity 15, right? So clearly Wisdom's the winner. But what happens if I do Cat's Grace? 19 plus 4. Now look what happens with my range. It's 10. It's gone up. It should be 9 because of the wisdom. It's plus 1 more because the dexterity is now effectively higher. Now this is at 9. This is at 9. Take a knee. Notice how it goes back down to 8 because now the wisdom bonus is higher. So again, important to remember because you'd be like, why am I hitting a lot harder than I thought it used to be? Oh, well, it's because your dexterity got bumped because you're wearing a magic cloak of blah blah blah. And it's now technically higher than your wisdom, so maybe you really didn't need Zen Archery. You're just going to focus on pumping that dexterity with gear, or spells, or whatever. That's a totally viable way of doing things. But usually, when you're doing Zen Archery, you already know your dexterity is probably like 10, or 8, something lame sauce. But your wisdom is already high because you're a cleric or a druid, and you knew you were going to be doing cleric and druid abilities. High wisdom means higher spells, access, and all that good gravy. But now watch this. There's this awesome spell, Owl's Insight again, I tell you about. This one here will only put me up at another 7 points. But 7 Wisdom put me at 23. So 22, 12, so it'll be a 6 increase. Instead of plus 3, it should be plus 6. Watch this. Yeah. And look at my attack bonus go with these bad boys now. I have a 12 with my a sling. 11 with my uh, short bow and 11 with the darts all because it's keying off of wisdom from one little spell and that was from a scroll if I was a druid rocking it at 30 that would have been a plus 15 to my wisdom which would have made it even better so those numbers could have been really high so if you want to be a ranged druid you can totally be a ranged druid go zen archery and make sure you got uh, owl's insight or at the very least owl's wisdom ready to cast on yourself so you can really pump your wisdom through the roof all good stuff. 
Uh, but with that, I think I've covered everything I wanted to discuss. The only other thing that I could really do that you guys haven't seen would be something like um, getting another feat for weapon finesse. But again, the same general principle like you saw with our dexterity wisdom is applicable for our strength dexterity split. As long as dexterity is higher and I'm using the right weapon, weapon finesse is going to be great. Let's see if I can get it. I think, as a matter of fact, at a level 2 fighter, I get a free feat. So let's... Put it in there like that. This is like, yay. And it, yeah, there we go. So let's grab that weapon finesse, shall we? And again, tells you which weapons are in here. Dagger, hand axe, comma, kukri, light hammer, mace, rapier, short sword, sickle, whip, and unarmed strike, which is great if you're going to go monk style. Uh, but basically that short sword and that uh, dagger all work beautifully for me now. So, let's look at it, shall we? So here's our dagger. Refresh our screen. Notice how I have a bab of 5. Strength of 12, so plus 1 should make this 6. It is a dagger, plus 1, so 7. And I have weapon focus, so 8. But I'm rocking a 10. Where's all that coming from? Well, I'm getting one extra from dexterity. And then I'm getting another extra from being short, from being a small stature, right? Short sword's less because I don't have weapon focus, but still higher than it should be because, again, it's rocking it off of dexterity, not strength. And again, how do I know that? Watch me cast mass cat scrape on myself. It goes up, and now it goes up here, right? So now I'm at 11. Now I'm at 12. And again, it's because my dexterity's higher. If I wanted it to be higher and I didn't have access to that, I'll just make sure to pump my strength through the roof. So now here's my strength at 16, not 12. Notice how again it goes up. Shrink it down, we'll refresh the screen. Why is it going to 11 instead of 10? Because now the strength bonus is higher than the dex bonus. So again, the same general principle just like we saw with dex and wisdom with ranged weapons. It should be the same with melee touch attacks and ranged touch attacks, but I've had a devil of a time proving that that's true. I don't think it works, class. So if anyone knows different, or if maybe it's just you have to have a specific mod loaded up, that's entirely possible, but I don't notice it. And the reason I point that out to you guys is because if you're thinking you're going to be a self-buffer, like a, let's say a druid, that's going to rock with some serious wisdom and do a lot of ranged touch attacks I don't think they have many spells that do that, but they probably have at least a couple. You're probably not going to hit like you think you're going to hit. You're like, why am I hitting so low? It's because your dexterity is crap, and your bab is not that great, and your attack bonus is therefore sucky. Well, it should be keyed it off on wisdom. It should, but it doesn't. So, again, be warned of stuff like that. It, I think it does work for some god-awful reason. I think the melee touch attacks do work like they should, where if you have an increase to your strength, that it's keying off of it. But now the difference for that could be, and again, I'm speculating here, the difference from that could be is I wasn't using things like bull strength or mass bull strength on my druid. I was changing into a bear. The bear had its own strength stat, which was high. I was doing a melee touch attack, which the druids have a lot of, and I think it was keying off of his base attack bonus and his new strength bonus. Now that may be the difference. That could be the trick that makes it work. But I, I tried to do, I want to say Badger has a good dexterity, and I tried to do some ranged touch attacks that I have, like I had a couple levels in Wizard, uh, therefore I had, uh, oh, let me show you, mm, things like Acid Splash and Ray of Frost are cheap and easy, right? So I had those, and um, I had those and the range touch attacks were not keying off of the dexterity of the badger. I don't know why. So maybe it's just the range touch attacks are ginked. But something to try. Something to check out. Uh, certainly there's spells that can buff you in your attack bonuses. And they should work for range touch attacks too. So that's good. Uh, feats of course that would work. There's even a, a weapon focus for melee touch attack. And a weapon focus for range touch attack. If you really want to push those ones up. Just one more point. Remember. The touch attacks are great because they ignore a lot of armor class from the target. They just have to hit them. Doesn't matter if you touch them on the shield or their armor or them, you still hit them. So, a good way for you to make sure you nail somebody as a wizard or a sorcerer, right? Uh, but again, I highly suggest getting things like Tree Strike. 
Well, even if it's for nothing more than I really need to hit that troll with that last little acid splash that I have. True strike first. You know, when you're standing right next to the, the troll that's taking a knee. And then acid splash as a follow-up move. So long as he hasn't gotten back up before then, boom, you should hit him every time. You, you could probably screw it with a you know natural one roll, but a plus 20 is a plus 20. That's a pretty good bump to your chances to hitting your target. So with that, though, I think that covers everything I really wanted to say. Remember, it's really hard to mess up your character, but you can do it. Like I said, if I did the worst I think I can make my Bab as a level 30 character, let's see if I can do this. If, let's say, I was a, a split level 5 druid, level 5 wizard, level 5 cleric, and a level 5 sorcerer, bard, whatever, something that's not a fighter class, that would be subpar... My, let's see, the wizard and sorcerer would have been only giving me two points each, that's four. The cleric would only be giving me three, and same with the druid, would only be giving me three, so that's six. I could have a bab, I think, of ten, and I could probably make it even lower than that as a level 30 character by just being a doofus. You don't want to do that. So keep an eye on your bab, make sure it's going up in a good way. Sometimes, and there's, there's no way around it, like if you have that magic build, you know, where it's like four levels of paladin and, you know, 16 levels of sorcerer, you know, or whatever. Sometimes you have to cross dip and, you know, go in a way that you don't get that base attack bonus this level. Next level, you will. It sucks. Plan around it if you can, but by and large, know why is it I'm hitting like a wussy and I'm missing half the time? Well, it's probably because your bab is low and you don't have spells or magic weapons to, like, compensate or high physical attributes to compensate. But with that, I think we'll end the video here. My name is Brother Newton. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. And if you guys know of any differences from what I've said or mods that change things around, by all means, post down below the description below and let us know. We're all here to learn. And with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.